Hey, thank you so much for watching. I am Pippi Peterson. Join me in this video on my journey with a leaky toilet, which by Murphy's Law started, I was just beginning some floor renovations. Also, how serendipitous, but a few days after I discovered the leak, my parents were going to visit for a day. So that was great. Many thanks to my mom and dad for helping me. My mom held the camera sometimes, and uh, my dad did a lot of work with me. I started tearing out the floor, um, one, because I was going to begin renovation, but two, I started noticing that it was leaking, and then as I pull more away, I realized the leak is like gone way out there. So it's a much more serious problem than I thought, and right now I'm digging into the, the little pedestal there to see if I can get to the pipes underneath. Hold it, because I'm going to put this that's the plant screw. Yeah. Every plant needs a screw. We first had to figure out that the leak was above the pedestal, it wasn't below. So once we figured that out and could not feel a leak in the toilet, then we realized we're going to have to take the toilet off of the pedestal, completely remove it, uh, disconnect it from the flange. We thought, oh, maybe it's the flange is where it's leaking. So removing the toilet was a bit of an ordeal in itself. We could see one screw below the pedal, but we couldn't find where the other screw was. We thought, certainly it's not going to be connected with just one screw. So after a lot of investigation, we finally found where it was, and it was not an easy screw to reach. It was like 10 inches down into the toilet, and we had to go get this thing called a universal or often called a wobbly and then we had to get the fittings for that and an extender for the wrench. When we finally got all that worked out we moved the toilet and then took a look at it. That is the, where the water supply hooks to and that is where we took the screw out. Wait a minute. Yes, right there is where we took the screw out right there. And somewhere in all of that is our leak. So we finally had the toilet out, but we still didn't know exactly where the leak was. We had a suspicion. On the back of the toilet, there is a metal mechanical part that runs the pedal of the toilet. And that had a lot of buildup from hard water. So we thought it's got to be coming from the mechanical metal part. We decided that the best thing to do is just actually buy a new toilet versus replace or fix the mechanical metal part. And the old toilet had a very interesting way that it was screwed into the, the floor. The slots for the bolts actually lined up at a diagonal angle, whereas most toilet bolts line up perfectly straight across. We tried to remove the flange from the pedestal so we could return it so it could fit the new toilet or put a new one in. Well, that, it turns out, was glued at the pipe, so we couldn't remove that. So instead, we thought, you know what, we're just going to have to drill our own notches in it. So we did that, it worked, and we didn't have to remove it, and we got a little bit of home treatment, so it just makes it that much better. Also, to um, access where I was going to put the new shark bite and the new joint, I cut a hole, um, well, actually there was a hole in the pedestal already where the old pipe came out, but I cut it out of the side of the pedestal so that I could get my hands down there a little bit easier and access the new piping joint a little bit better. Hey guys! <laughs> so, I recently found a mouse, that's why I'm wearing this, I was just uh, vacuuming, or not vacuuming, but um, sweeping up a bunch of mouse droppings. And um, in this part of the U.S., there's what's called hantavirus, and I, oh, it freaks me out. So I'm wearing this. I just sweeped up. I actually caught a mouse. Um, so that mouse has been removed. I've got another trap set. In the meantime, I am pulling the staples out of the bathroom floor. And uh, once I get all the staples pulled out and any bits of remaining linoleum, I'm going to um, sand it down with a medium to high grit uh, sandpaper. And then I'm going to put some wood finish on it. Alrighty, so I got about 50 staples pulled out. 
and I sanded the floor. I got as much uh, linoleum cut back as, and I am now ready to uh, use the stain to just kind of protect the wood a little bit more. It is all paint, and you can see it's like shiny wet there and like drier over here. Alrighty, so I've gotten, uh, I've got my old pipe cut out. One strategy that I love to do um, in these older motorhomes, they have really hard piping for everything. It's terrible because it's easy to get leaks. It's it's hard. You can't move it around. So when I cut, because I knew I was gonna have to cut a pipe. Um, when I when I did that, I wanted to cut out as many joints as I possibly could. So I, I got this mini out, um, and I will replace it with a flexi one uh, for so many beneficial reasons. Um, and then you might be wondering, well, if you cut out a pipe, how are you going to get something with screws on it? Well, they make these things called shark bites, or another brand, it's the same thing, it's called a gator bite. Um, it's literally just this thing, the way they've got it, you just slip it on there. You got to be really careful and this has got to be really cleaned off when you do it. And, and, uh, even, um, you just slip it on and if you get it on a little bit cockney, it will leak. So you got to be really careful when you put it on, put it on really straight and really slow. Um, and <clears throat> it's just awesome because once you have that onto your cut pipe, then it's got another end which has uh, threads. So then you can just start threading it again with um, other piping. I, I got this particular one because uh, since it's going to a toilet, this is actually an on and off valve for water. So if hopefully there won't be a next time, but if there is a next time, I can now shut the, shut the water off just to the toilet where the leak is instead of having to turn it off in the entire motorhome which I haven't had water for several days and uh, it makes doing many things very difficult. So with this, I can, I can just turn off the water to the leak at the toilet, but hopefully it'll never happen anyway. So it's just a few extra bucks to get it with the, with the valve on it. All right, so I'm ready. I, I've also um, sanded the floor and the uh, toilet pedestal and I have applied some finish to it, um, also called a sealer, finisher sealer. And then I let that dry for a day and then I sanded it again and put more finisher slash sealer on it. That way, if I do have any more leaks or just, you know, getting in and out of the bathtub with water, washing your hands and it goes on the floor, um, the wood's gonna be m much more protected, even though I'm gonna have a vinyl flooring over it. It'll, if anything gets down there or even up from the bottom, it's gonna be a lot more um, protected. So I'm going to put this on, uh, get my plumbing set up, and then after that, once I have the hose coming out, then I'm going to put my new flooring. Uh, it's so serendipitous that I'm also <laughs> replacing the flooring as well. I'll, I will put the new flooring on this pedestal before putting the toilet on. So I'm going to put this on, then get the pipes all set up and I'll put the flooring over that so it's mostly in place. And then once the flooring's dry, then I can set the toilet on and get up and running again. So I have a metal file here. I'm gonna use it to try to um, clean off some of the shavings that, that you see on the pipe, just so I'm gonna have a really good connection with the, with the shark bite. I could use sandpaper as well, um, but this is kind of nice and pointy and it kind of accesses the pipe's location a little bit better. So I got the water on, or I got the, uh, I got the shark bite on and I turned the water on and unfortunately I'm seeing a leak. So I actually have to take the I'm going to have to take the shark bite off and try to re-clean the edge of the pipe or just try to get it on a little bit better. I actually pushed it on a little bit tighter. I could feel it go just a smidgen more. Um, so I've got it all dried up um, because I want to make sure I can test for other leaks. And when you get a leak and you're renovating, 
and your place is a mess like this, you take your favorite Laughing Mona Lisa napkins that are rendered useless because of a mouse in the drawer and you <laughs> clean up with those since you can't use them elsewhere anymore, unfortunately. So anyway, I'm going to actually uh, put another one under here to just to get some of the drips if I get more leaking. All right, here we go. Take two, let's turn on the water again. Okay, so I've got my Laughing Mona Lisa napkin down there underneath the joint where it was leaking. And I'm pretty sure it's not leaking anymore. So that feels pretty darn good. <laughs> so something I've learned, um, I'm, I can be the type of person that if something that seems a little overwhelming, if it goes wrong, um, I could, I can easily freak out, <laughs> but I've learned that when plumbing and there's leaks and stuff, you don't really need to fit to freak out. Um, usually you just need to screw things on a little bit tighter <laughs> or push them on tighter. And, uh, that's really awesome. <laughs> I wish, I wish all of life was like plumbing. You just screwed it on a little bit tighter. <laughs> so there's this thing called, um, plumber's tape. And when you have an end like this, uh, and you're gonna have water going through the pipes, and you're gonna connect something else onto it, and you want to get some of this like tape stuff. It's not sticky. It's just kind of kind of stretchy, and it sticks to itself, kind of like saran. Um, and then you're just gonna want to wrap it around several times, and that will prevent uh, other leaks happening at the joints. When you use a hose and it's got one of these fittings that has like this, this rubber inside, that's actually called compression fitting and you don't need to use um, plumber's tape with it. In fact, plumber's tape, if possibly over the, um, the edge of the fitting, it could actually get down in here in between the rubber and cause a leak. So whenever you have compression fittings like this with the rubber inside that actually makes it, seals it as you as you um, tighten it, you don't need plumbing tape. When you're tightening the um, joints for plumbing, um, don't rely on just hand tightening. Um, definitely use a wrench, uh, even if it's going to take a little bit longer. Alright, so possibly the grossest thing just happened to me. Um, the the hole to the sewage, it's pretty well cleaned. I kind of uh, rinsed it out when I after I took the toilet off, but um, I'm checking the pressure now uh, with that new with that new link in there, and um, the water just came shooting out, of course, and uh, sprayed on the side of the sewage pipe, and um, just got a bunch of water sprayed up in my face and on the walls. Mostly it's okay, but I'm gonna have to go wash off now because that's just absolutely disgusting <laughs> All right, so I'm super excited because I got my flooring um, as I mentioned before I'm, uh, Once I get the toilet fixed, which was not on the agenda um, I'm I'm in the beginning process of redoing the flooring um, but since the the toilet sits on a pedestal uh, that's gonna require the same flooring I'm opening the flooring now and I'm really excited uh, and I'm going to put the flooring just on the pedestal for now so I can get the toilet on um, and then all of that's hooked up going which, make life's, which makes life a lot easier. So here we go. This is the, um, this is a, it's like called a high quality vinyl or something or luxury vinyl, um, luxury vinyl flooring, LVF and uh, it's a, it's in the pattern of African wood. And I just loved it the first minute I saw it. Cool. Oh my god, that looks so awesome. I love it. I can't wait. So here's my flooring. It looks awesome. Oh. <laughs> I can't wait to see it over the entire floor. It's so like dramatic and um, 
high contrast. It's awesome. So anyway, I'm going to uh, install this on the pedestal right now. So I'm going to have to do a lot of um, measuring because it's, you know, it's on this um, tiny little area uh, with a lot of cutting. So, so off to do that. Piece number one. So I got the new flooring installed on um, just the pedestal part. I'm going to save the full flooring for another video and another day. Um, so I'm ready to get the toilet installed. And by the way, if you ever have to remove your toilet, it's a good idea to put um, something like, um, I just tore this up from the kitchen floor, but like anything, even if it's just a piece of paper, it'll really cut the smell that comes out of the, the sewer pipe. All right, here we go. So I've got my fingers. I'm going to grab kind of the holes so I can feel the holes down here at the bottom. So I can kind of feel and guide them over these bolts. Here we go. So I've, I'm hooked up back here and I'm hooked up there and I've got the water on now. Um, and it works. So uh, I think I'm pretty, I'm good to go. Well, that was very satisfying. Um, definitely stressful before I knew um, how it was going to get done. Uh, I learned a lot. I enjoyed it. And to have my new toilet and my new fittings and um, taken out a lot of the, the bad joints and uh, replaced the leak and I've got my new flooring started, it's absolutely satisfying. So don't be afraid to uh, work on your own toilet, replace your toilet, um, or even just work on your plumbing. It's pretty darn satisfying. and fun too. So thank you so much for watching. I'm Pippi Peterson and until next time, keep it simple.